What's going on guys, this is Sam, and iOS 11.2 is now available for everyone. After a really strange turn of events, late Friday night, early Saturday morning, Apple released iOS 11.2 for all devices capable of running iOS 11. So in this video, we'll talk about everything that's new and whether or not you should be updating. Apple rushed the iOS 11.2 update out because late Friday night and early Saturday morning, reports from people all around the world started coming in, saying that once their devices hit December second they were experiencing these really weird crashes and their device was respringing and like partially rebooting which is obviously a really big issue it was known that in iOS 11.2 this reboot or respring issue was not present so Apple pushed this firmware out for everyone the same day that they released the last iOS 11.2 beta I know myself and a lot of others weren't really expecting this to come out for another week or so but Apple pushed it out right now the biggest new feature is Apple pay cash this is really cool if you you go into the messages application down at the very bottom of your screen in your iMessage app drawer, you're going to see a new option for Apple Pay Cash. It's the easiest way to send money. You go into the messages app, you type in someone's name, and you can send them money through Apple Pay using iMessage. I've tested it out for myself. It's very secure, very reliable, and for me, it's easier than using something like PayPal or Square Cash just because it's built right into the Messages app, and the only thing you have to do is basically set it up through settings, but once you do that or once you go through the Wallet app, you're good to go and you can start sending and receiving money using Apple Pay and iMessage. Moving over to the iPhone 10, we got a few specific changes for that device only in this update. First of all, if you go to the lock screen, there is a new control center grabber in the very top right hand corner of the screen that looks like that. Not a huge change but it lets you know on the iPhone 10 lock screen you can't actually drag down from there to access control center. There are also three new live wallpapers on the iPhone 10. Each and every single one of these looks really great when you press on them because they are live wallpapers they're going to animate and they're from that one iPhone 10 commercial showing off the new super retina OLED display but they actually look great on any device so if you want to get the still versions of these new iPhone 10 wallpapers I'll leave a link down below in the description over on my website I've got these wallpapers available for download moving away from specific changes for the iPhone 10 on all devices in iOS 11.2 when you go into control center and disable Wi-Fi and Bluetooth for the first time it's going to let you know that in iOS 11 disabling these works a little bit differently than it did in iOS 10 or iOS 9 rather than completely disabling Wi-Fi or Bluetooth when you quote-unquote turn these off in control center the toggles are now gonna glow white once you disable them here because they're not technically completely disabled it sounds kind of confusing but there's a new pop-up for Wi-Fi that says disconnecting nearby Wi-Fi until tomorrow the current Wi-Fi network and others nearby will be disconnected until tomorrow however Wi-Fi Wi-Fi will continue to be available for airdrop, personal hotspot, and location accuracy. It's very similar for Bluetooth. It says Bluetooth will continue to be available for Apple Watch, Apple Pencil, personal hotspot, and handoff, but it's going to disconnect accessories and not allow any others to connect until the next day. It's definitely a little bit confusing even with the explanations, but this is the new way that it works in iOS 11, and while it probably would have made sense to have these pop-ups included in iOS 11.0 or in iOS 11.1, they're in iOS iOS 11.2 to better explain how Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and Control Center work. Next up, inside of the calculator app, there is a really weird animation issue in earlier versions of iOS 11 where typing in 1 plus 2 plus 3 really quickly would give you 24 rather than the correct answer 6. Regardless of what numbers you pressed or whether you added, subtracted, divided, or multiplied, if you did it too quickly, you would get this really strange number. In iOS 11.2, the animation has been tweaked so math works correctly again. In the emoji section in iOS 11.2, there has been a number of changes. Now, iOS 11.1 was the big new emoji update for 2017. Loved all the changes there, but in iOS 11.2, there were a couple of tweaked emojis. The shot or tumbler glass emoji has been reverted to its design before October of 2017. All these images are courtesy of Emojipedia. They always do a great job of putting together these comparisons. The ant was also tweaked right here. Next up, both the camera emojis in iOS 11.2 have been tweaked. They look a little bit more detailed now. I like that they show a larger lens rather than something like a point and shoot. The new versions look something closer to a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. All three of the 
the globes in iOS 11.2 have more contrast between the sea and the land, which looks pretty nice. There's also a wider mailbox emoji right here in iOS 11.2, which I actually like a lot better than the previous version. Following that, the fork and knife emoji, the fork, plate, and knife emoji, and finally, the spoon emoji have been updated in iOS 11.2. These also look a little bit more detailed to me. You can see more shadows on here than you could in iOS 11.1, which I think also looks great. And finally, there's a new gear or cog emoji in iOS 11.2, looking a little bit different than iOS 11.1. Now, I was kind of surprised that Apple did not use the iUpdate OS gear for this, but if they reach out, I'm sure we can make something work. Moving on with some more changes inside of iOS 11.2, there is faster 7.5 watt wireless charging on the iPhone 8, the iPhone 8 Plus, and the iPhone 10. Previously, in iOS 11.1, it was software limited to 5 watts, but in iOS 11.2, you can do the 7.5 watt wireless charging that is faster than ever. Inside of the TV app in iOS 11.2, there's a new tab in between Watch Now and Library. It is a sports tab. It's going to show you all of the upcoming games, games that are on right now, men's and women's college basketball, and a number of other collegiate sports, along with soccer. I think I saw rugby. If you're a huge sports person, you'll probably love that new tab. It looks like it will be really handy for keeping track of all the games that are happening. If not, it just sits in the TV app, and it's not a huge deal anyway. One other change in iOS 11.2 that Apple didn't highlight in the official change log, we'll jump into that for the other changes in just a second, but that Mac rumors pointed out was that the i.t or it autocorrect bug that a lot of users were seeing in iOS 11.1.2 has been corrected in iOS 11.2. I didn't experience this bug, but if you did, it should be fixed now. Hopefully this is the last autocorrect bug for a while. We saw the weird one with the i autocorrecting, and now we saw the, the it glitch, and I feel like I've seen a number of others like Loki popping up as well. Hopefully this is the last one. They're really annoying, and they definitely impair your typing experience, but for now, it looks like things are are getting better with autocorrect. So those are all of the major changes inside of iOS 11.2. It is a really big update, but inside of the official changelog from Apple, there are so many other changes as well. I just want to pick out a few that I think are important because there are a ton of fixes. This is a really good bug fix update. It says that there's improved video camera stabilization. This is an issue that I was having. I'll have to test that at a later date. Improved stability in calendar. Fixes an issue that could prevent swiping to today view or camera from the lock screen. Addresses an issue that could prevent users from deleting recent photos when iCloud storage is exceeded. That's a really weird one. Uh, it says the calculator fix is in here where it could lead to the wrong or incorrect result and addresses an issue where the keyboard could respond slowly. There's also a few voiceover and accessibility improvements, add support for real-time text RTT phone calls for the deaf and hard of hearing, and improves voiceover stability in messages, settings, app store, and music. One other here as well for accessibility resolves an issue that prevented voiceover from announcing incoming notifications. That is everything new in iOS 11.2 so far, but we do have a little bit more to talk about. Apple has not officially published the security updates in iOS 11.2, so make sure you check out my official blog post down below in the description. I'll be sure to update it with those details once Apple updates their security page. I also want to touch on battery life and performance inside of iOS 11.2. These have been very hot topics in iOS 11 so far, but I'm happy to say that in iOS 11.2, I have never personally experienced experienced better battery life or performance, at least on iOS 11 so far. The performance is off the charts. I was getting 10,400 for my multi-core score in Geekbench, and battery life on the iPhone 10 has gotten me through the day plus some. It's been phenomenal. I would highly recommend that anybody that can update to iOS 11.2 does, because not only do you get new features like Apple Pay Cash, you also get stability improvements, so many bug fixes, and better performance, and hopefully better battery life. So overall, iOS 11.2 is a huge new update. We've been waiting for this one for a decent amount of time. Next up on the horizon should be iOS 11.3, but there are no rumors or any leaks for that just yet. But of course, make sure you guys stay tuned here for all of the latest iOS news. And let me know what you think about iOS 11.2 by leaving a comment down below. Do you think iOS 11 continues to head in the right direction, or do you think Apple has a lot of work to do in the back end? And also let me know if you were experiencing any bugs or glitches in the comment section as well, because I feel like iOS 11 is in a really good state. iOS 11.2 for me 
has been pretty much flawless on my iPhone 10, but because it's a newer device, it's probably working that way because Apple has focused so much attention to the details on that device. But if you're using an older device, let me know how your experience is on there. If you enjoyed this video, it does help me out if you take one second to drop a like down below. And of course, hit subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I also have new merch out if you want to help support the channel and get a t-shirt, it would definitely help me out as well. I've been Sam. I hope all of you are doing great. It is 4 a.m. in my time zone. Super late. I'm exhausted, but this is a really big update that was worth covering right away. So thank you so much for watching. I genuinely appreciate that, and I'll talk to you in my next video.